please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, well, the mid-cap index, that one's fallen almost 300 points from the high point of the day. Currently sitting with a cut of 120 points and a lot of the stocks, they're getting clobbered as we speak. Adani Power, uh, the whole Adani group was buzzing in yesterday's trading session. So giving up some of those gains from yesterday, uh, Adani Power is down about 10% from the high point of the day. Currently sitting with a cut of about 8%. Kajaria Ceramics, that stock too, has taken a sharp knock towards the downside. We have a couple of financials thrown in there as well. South Indian Bank, which was gaining in the morning, is now back into red terrain with a cut of almost two to and a half percent ujivan that one too has fallen about four percent from the high point of the day so a lot of the mid caps below beneath the surface there is some pain the nifty itself is down about 50 60 points from the high point of the day holding above that 11,000 mark just with 26 points very important to watch out for the next few hours of trade the nifty bank closing in uh, on the weekly options expiry so that is something we will be watching out for but marquee private equity firm temasek with over 200 billion dollars invested globally has about 10 billion dollars deployed in India. Our colleague Nisha Pudar caught up with Ravi Lamba, the joint head of India, to understand their strategy in the changing global environment, starting with trade war between US and China itself. We are seeing a significant uh, development across the, uh, across the world, different from what we've seen for the last possibly a decade, where you're right, rates are going up. Uh, in the US, for, for example, rates are already tightening. Uh, you will see fiscal stimulus probably wearing off towards the latter part of this year and early next year, oh. which is going to, in our view, land up uh, creating a possibly putting the U.S. into uh, a recessionary environment. Uh, now how deep, how long, that we'll have to see how it pans out. But because of that, and as you rightly said, the trade war uh, uh, and the geopolitical situation that's arising out of that is also going to create some volatility oh. and perhaps some uncertainty. Oh. So from our perspective, uh, as we look forward, we are moderating our pace of investment. We're going to be more careful and more cautious globally. Hmm. And we will apply the same lens when it comes to India, where, as you rightly said, uh, you know, we have put $1.5 billion to work ever since the fiscal year closed in April. There could be a recession in the U.S. and therefore you're moderating your overall investments. That has not been something that we have seen so far with you. You have 4% of your total funds really deployed in India right now. But if you're going to be net sellers, uh, in this particular year, do you have enough uh, avenues for doing that, given that our equity markets are also quite volatile and you are hugely present in the public market space? Yeah, I mean, you know, we are a long-term investor, so we don't, we typically don't manage our portfolio year to year. But I think what we can do is as we see developments play out, we will moderate our pace of investment. MASIC has been investing in uh, the banks of the countries as a proxy mm -hmm. growth opportunity for any particular country uh, that you're present in. And you have investments in ICICI Bank, Access Bank, as well as HDFC Bank. So how will you be positioned for something like an ICICI Bank and Access Bank in the current environment? So we are, you know, we are, we are investors in, 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 in these banks. Uh, you know, we are watching the developments. Uh, we, we think that these developments will, will, will pass uh, and the banks will return to, you know, what they have done before, which is, uh, you know, just good, uh, you know, just uh, good practices across in the businesses that they've created. So we do not see over the long term these short term developments as having any uh, impact on the way we look at banks as a proxy or as an investment destination for us. All right. So you'll stay put with uh, whatever investments you have currently. Yes, we, we continue to be invested, yes. All right. Besides uh, the key banks, uh, you have been upbeat on the financial services basket on the yes. whole. Uh, you recently invested in AU Finance, and you have investments in ICICI Pro Life, and you have Sriram Transport Finance, mm -hmm. and you have been also uh, looking at other buying opportunities. How are you positioned on the entire financial services space, and how much appetite do you have for further investments? So, so we think that credit growth is very important for, for a company to grow and of a country to develop. And these are all the ways where credit growth will, will be facilitated. Mm. So we pick our spots and, and we are happy to stay invested. How are you positioned as far as housing finance space is concerned? Would you be interested in something like a PNB housing finance where a uh, deal is going to be kick-started? Yeah, so again, I think it's uh, unwise for me to talk about specific opportunities. But uh, as, a, as a subsector of, of financial services, housing finance is, is attractive. There is a lot of growth in that sector. There's a lot of growth coming out of not just the housing finance side, but also growth across housing 
uh, as you look at it as a proxy for other sectors. Uh, so, and we've invested in, in, in recently in some other sectors that will be a direct beneficiary mm. of, of, of housing, for example. But you have invested mm -hmm. in uh, Adani ports uh, mm -hmm. very recently. And uh, we do also gather that you could be looking at co-investing with EQT of mm -hmm. Sweden. So can you throw more light about your on your infrastructure play in India and how focused are you? So, so uh, per se, we have not been a, invested in infrastructure as a, as a, as a subsector, as a sector, only because the, the returns from infrastructure have been are generally lower. Uh, now, broadly in Asia, Again, infrastructure has not been a big part of what we do, but we do see mm. uh, the relevance of having investments in infrastructure as a category because it produces very stable cash flow returns. What is your uh, position on Manipal if it manages to buy out Fortis? If it lands up buying Fortis, will Temasek exit um, an investment like Manipal Hospitals? Yeah, I, I, again, it will be unfair for me to comment on what we will do there uh, if something else happens. I think we are happy to be invested in Manipal. And we will, we, will, we will evaluate as the process unfolds. You have huge investments through Singtel in Bharti Airtel. You have Tata Tele in your portfolio. You have Tata Sky. How are you positioned on this particular sector? Uh, we will see the emergence of stronger players that, than we had before, where there were, there were some strong and several weak players. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a positive development as we look at it. It will take time to play out. Uh, it'll, uh, uh, but the, the other side of that is that there is technology change coming. Uh, 5G is going to be an important aspect of what telecom services will have to move towards, and everyone will start off at the same uh, at the same starting gate, and therefore there is a function of how you uh, prepare your business for that, uh, make sure your balance sheet is strong, and make sure you can cater to that new technology uh, as you go forward. So, so we think we're, we're positive uh, long term on telecom because connectivity is becoming the way the world is going. You know, there's going to be uh, billions and billions of connected devices, and the only thing that connects them is a telecom network. So if you got to you got to think about that as a as a long term trend and then you got to think about how you're going to play that